Dr. John Dispenza é o ator, é autor best-seller do New York Times, pesquisador, conferencista e consultor corporativo. Ele realiza uma brilhante interface entre ciência e espiritualidade, integrando com maestria os conhecimentos da física quântica, neurociência e epigenética para explorar a ciência por trás das remissões espontâneas. Ele usa esse conhecimento para ensinar as pessoas a curar seus corpos de problemas de saúde, fazer mudanças significativas em suas vidas e desenvolver sua consciência. Desde 2010, ele está com uma equipe de cientistas para pesquisar os efeitos da meditação no coração e nas funções cerebrais, na resposta imunológica e na saúde geral da mente e do corpo. Dr. Joe, é um imenso prazer apresentar o seu trabalho para o público brasileiro, especialmente aos meus seguidores, que já viram falar de você muitas vezes. Você fala muito da importância é, da gratidão no processo de manifestação de uma nova realidade. Como é que acontece esse processo internamente? Well, um, this is a, a reconditioning uh, that has to take place uh, in the sincere person that wants to learn how to create from the field instead of from matter. Let's see if I can break this down simply. When you receive something favorable or you just receive something favorable, if something just happened to you that you liked or something unexpected to you is happening to you in the present moment, the emotion that you feel is gratitude. So the emotional signature of gratitude means something just happened that you liked or something is happening to you right in that moment. So the emotional signature of gratitude is the emotional signature of receiving. Now, thoughts are electrical charges in the quantum field and feelings are like magnetic charges in the quantum field. And how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So the thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the event back. And the heart tends to be the magnet that draws experiences to us. So if the person is intending to be healthy, intending to be wealthy, intending to be in love in a new relationship, but they're sending the signal out and they're waiting for the environment to produce the event so they can feel the emotion, then they're hypnotized and conditioned into believing they need a reason for gratitude. They need a reason to feel love. They need a reason to feel abundant. That's, that's, that's waiting for the environment to change so that you can feel the emotion, to give you the relief from the separation of the experience. But if it requires a coherent brain, that's the thought sending the signal out, and a coherent heart, that means drawing the event back to you, then what emotion do people typically feel in their waking day? They feel fear. They feel anxiety, they feel uh, aggression, unworthiness, insecurity, uh, competition, uh, guilt, shame, unworthiness, whatever it is. So they're, they're not, they don't have a Wi-Fi signal. And when the heart feels aggression, when the heart feels frustration, when we feel impatience, the heart beats out of order. It's very incoherent. When we feel gratitude, when we feel appreciation, when we feel love, The heart beats very orderly, and you can teach people how to do that. And when the heart beats orderly, it begins to produce an ambient external magnetic field that's up to three meters wide. Now, now your heart is in order, and it's sending a strong signal out, and that's energy. And that energy is frequency, and frequency carries information. And now you can lay the thought of your health on the frequency because it's a match. You can't lay health on the thought of suffering or the feeling of suffering. It doesn't work. The feeling of suffering carries different thoughts. So then teaching people how to create that kind of coherence in their heart. Well, we're not asking them to pretend to do it. We're asking them, we put heart rate monitors on them and we can tell you whether you're doing it or not because we want you to see that when you do this properly, When you're feeling the feelings of gratitude for your creations before they happen, your body is so objective that it does not know the difference between the real life experience that's producing the emotion and the emotion that you're creating by thought alone. 
to the body, it's believing that it's living in that future reality in the present moment. And if you're feeling gratitude for your creations, you're less likely to look for them because you don't feel separate from them. You feel connected to them. Now, if you lose that feeling of your connection energetically to your future and you start feeling hostile or impatient, you just return back to the emotions that are familiar to you that are of your past. And now you disconnected from the energy of your future. And if you say to me, well, it's because of my ex or because of my boss or because of my coworker, or because of the news or because of the traffic, then I would say to you, oh no, you're back to the unconscious program of believing that you're a victim to your life. So then when a person combines that clear intention, a vision of their future, combined with an elevated emotion, the stronger the emotion that they could feel in a sense of gratitude, the more altered they feel inside of them, the more they'll pay attention to the intention in their mind. And now they're branding that image holographically in their brain, and in a sense, they're remembering their future, and they're changing their state of being. So then our job then is to be able to maintain this energetic state for our entire day. And if you can, and you can stay coherent, Get ready because weird things are going to begin to happen to you in your life. You're going to start seeing feedback coming to you because you're the magnets to your destiny. Now you don't have to go get anything and drag your body through space and force and control outcomes and fight for them. That's what matter does when it's trying to affect matter. But when you're creating from the field and you have a Wi-Fi signal and you have this a vibrational match between your energy and some possibility in the quantum field, and those synchronicities and those opportunities and those coincidences that are happening all around you. You're not doing anything. You change your energy. You change your life. And being able to sustain that for an extended period of time until you see feedback in your life is the sign then that you're the creator of your life. And when those incidents occur and you feel the excitement and the joy and the awe from the fact that it appeared right in front of you, I guarantee you that that feeling you're going to use for your next creation, and it's going to be a little easier for you to feel gratitude. It's going to be a little easier for you to fall in love with life. And what I love about our community of students around the globe, Wallace, is that our students do the work. They're not philosophers. They show up and they do it every day, not because they have to, but because there's magic happening in their life. And they don't want that magic to end. And so they, they, they want to continuously prove to themselves that they're, how they think and feel is producing outcomes in their life, that they're the creator of their life. And all of a sudden, they believe less that they're the victim of their life. And they're more paying attention now to how they're feeling. They're more aware of how they're thinking. They're catching themselves and returning back to that same energy. I do it. 50 to 100 times a day, just keep making my way back uh, to that same state. And how many times do we have to become conscious to the point where we no longer go unconscious? And that's the moment we change.